hopefully this video works a little better. Oh, Lauren, I don't know what to, to, to do. It's a bummer. <laughs> I had everything nicely set up for the cutting video. So, I'll just review it. No big deal. No biggie. That's what happens, right? Alright, so I tried to make one video and it didn't work for a lot of people, so I'm just going to go over it again. No big deal. The instructions are pretty self-explanatory anyway. Um, so what I was saying is once you print out your pattern piece, you want to make sure that your test square measures two square inches. Hi! <laughs> the video wasn't working for other people, so we just decided to make another one. And what I do with my main pattern piece yeah, Lauren, I don't know. I'd rather just start a new one. Um, I go ahead and cut, or I fold this in the center and cut it out. So that way I'm not trying to make it perfect on both sides and messing up at any time. And then you can save this piece, the heart cut out, to do an applique over top of the pattern. Or so that you can kind of fussy cut, figure out exactly what you want in the center of your pouch and then cut out around it. So after that um, you trace out two of your exterior pieces. You only put a heart on one. Of course that is totally up to you if you want to put a heart on both sides you can or if you want to leave it completely off because it's not your style. Not a problem. And then you'll cut two out of your interior fabrics. Fabric, my bad. Um, and if you're using a thinner quilting cotton, then you'll want to cut out two of a woven interfacing to line them as well. You can totally make this pattern out of all cotton. You'll just want to use um, SF101, probably times two on all pieces, except the lining, um, just to give it a nice sturdiness. But, you know, you can play and have fun. It doesn't take up a lot of fabric, which is nice. So, it's not a big waste if something happens. Um, you'll also want to cut out a 1 inch by 2.5 inch piece for your D-ring, for your strap connector. And to cut out the heart, you could repeat the step that we did on the pattern piece and cut around the heart. Or you can use an X-Acto knife. Or you can just wing it. But I like to use an X-Acto knife so that I can use this heart at a later time. <laughs> um, you could also upload the pattern if you have a um, a cutting machine like a Cameo or a Scan and Cut and you could cut out your vinyl with that. That would totally work too. But I have this super sharp X-Acto blade that cuts right through it. It's pretty awesome. Just watch your finger, of course. And then you want to make sure you don't mess up So now I've got my heart cut out and I could use this on a different pouch and sew it over top of another vinyl and then it would be a regular applique versus how we're doing it on this one which is a reverse applique. So there's the heart cut out. And the pattern says you can use quilting cotton or really literally any fabric in the heart. Um, but I'm going to use this super fun vinyl scrap that I have because look how awesome that's going to be. It just spoke to me. So this is another vinyl and I won't need to use any interfacing on it. Um, so it'll be, it'll be fun. You want to, um, if you were using a quilting cotton, 
You could lay this over top just to kind of get an idea of where you would like to cut. And you're going to want to cut a 4 by 5 inch piece of fabric. And I'm, I'm sure that most of you have a scrap of fabric that size just laying around that you can't bring yourself to get rid of. Or you could have photos printed onto fabric, which would be super cool. Um, and put photos of loved ones in the middle or something. Be fun. Oh, yes. Yes, so this is vinyl. This one is vinyl that I sell through my website. It's the turquoise color. It's number 49. And you can see, like, just how freaking shiny that is. Okay, so... I've got my two exteriors, I've got my scrap fabric cut out, I've got my D-ring slash strap connector ready to go, and I also have my lining fabrics. And that is all the fabric you need. Um, and then you need a 7 inch zipper for the small size, and you need a 9 inch zipper for the large size. Well, I was scared to rotary cut. I definitely use my rotary cutter a ton, especially when it comes to cutting out straight um, square interfacings and such. I promise, you guys, I promise. <laughs> okay, um, the other thing you need, uh, my bad, and this is optional. If you want to practice your piping skills, it's awesome. Um, but if you're scared to death of it, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, obviously do it, but if you really don't want to, don't. Um, you need an 18-inch piece for the small pouch, and you just need a 20-inch piece for the large pouch. And again, that's a scrap of interfacing that you have left over for making a handbag, or scrap of piping, not interfacing. Word vomit. And now you're ready to go. And because... This video is so short, and I don't want to lose you guys and start over again. I'm just going to make it right here, right now. So, let's go over to the sewing machine. Yay! It'll be fun. Right? You can see my mess. Don't look at the mess. <laughs> let's try the over-the-shoulder view again. Did I not flip it, you guys? I'm so sorry. There we go. Darn Facebook for making my video not work. Ruining everything. Okay. Alright. So the other piece of hardware that you need is a half inch D-ring okay you want to make sure you've got your iron ready to go and a zipper you got to pick out a zipper nine inch um, you can use a handbag zipper or an all-purpose zipper I like to use one that fits perfectly. Saves me a lot of hassle. But finding the perfect color, it's like darn near impossible, right? Oh, look, a pen. Hmm. I guess I'll go with black because I see no white. Black would be good. So, I'm going to iron my zipper, make sure it's nice and straight. I've got that ready to go. I like to iron my piping. Do hot pink. Ooh, hot pink would be fun. 
Do I have a hot pink? I didn't even see a hot pink. I saw like a Wayne pink and reds. Don't worry guys, I just ordered like 700 more zippers. Ooh. Hot pink y'all. We're doing hot pink, Anastasia calls it. Okay, so I'm gonna iron my zipper nicely. And my piping. So ironing it really helps get all those kinks out. Make it a little less kinky. Let me grab my pattern. making um, the For the Love of Change zipper pouch. It's a pattern that I literally just released. <laughs> Blueberries. Okay, so we're going to make the D-ring connector so that it's done and we can get it out of the way. And you're just going to fold in both sides. You can use a little piece of double-sided tape if you would like. And you know me. Hi, Mia! Love me some double-sided tape. Especially when it's completely unnecessary to use. I'm just going to fold in those ends. to make it half an inch by two and a half inches. I'm gonna to top stitch down both sides. I've got a four and a half inch stitch length at the moment. Oh, you're fine, Stella. Oh, thanks, Lauren, you rock. Then you're gonna slide your D-ring on. And then if you would like, you can top stitch right up against the D-ring here, or you can use a rivet. But I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch that in place. Make sure you don't hit your hardware or you could break a needle. You do not need an industrial machine to sew this zipper pouch. It, I think it would sew very nicely on any machine. As long as you've got the right foot and needle, you are good to go. Especially with this metallic vinyl, since it's a lot thinner than regular vinyl. Ugh, her Mickey pouch is so cute. I literally squealed with a delight when I saw it. I was like, oh, that's so cute. Anyway, so, at this point, we can sew our heart on. We can get our heart on. <laughs> so I like to lay it right side down. You could use a glue stick around the edge of the heart. Yes. And you used regular marine vinyl, so yeah. Um, you could use a glue stick, you could use basting tape, um, there is also a tacky glue that would work really well. Um, or sometimes what I do is if I'm interfacing it anyway, I'll lay a piece of long interfacing over this piece and carefully iron it so I don't melt my zipper, or melt my vinyl. I'm trying to get it to be less of a spotlight. There we go, perfect. Um, or you can use basting spray, which is what I'm going to do, and just um, spray a little bit on the heart.
Okay, so I've got basting spray on this main piece, and then I'm gonna lay my scrap face up, and then I'm gonna stick this over top, and you can kind of move it around just a little bit of leeway there to get it centered nicely. You wanna make sure it catches along all the seams, and you just press it down. Ooh, that's gonna be so pretty. And then you'll start top stitching. I honestly like to use about a four. You could even use a three and a half. You don't want to use anything too small where it might look a little funny, but again, you are the one making your masterpiece. So you have leeway to make your own decisions. So I'm going to start at the bottom of the heart sewing and I'm going to come around slow, very slow, all the way around. I'm going to come maybe like an eighth of an inch away, maybe even less. I'm going to back stitch a little bit, and then you just go slow, sewing around that heart. If you're not using a, the right foot for your vinyl, this part is going to be very difficult. stitch at that point just in case. to cut your excess fabric from around the heart you can. I've never found it to be an issue at all. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, Nikki, this was a sample from the place where I get my vinyl, but this is like that chunky rough vinyl. Um, but I figured for the center of the heart, it's not that big of a deal. It's not the whole thing. Plus, it's just so sparkly. Couldn't get over it. Okay. So, now we're going to place our D-ring over that designated mark. And you can just lay it right on top. Um, if you want it to come in a little closer, again, that's totally up to you. You can shift it from side to side, but this will ensure that it definitely doesn't get caught um, in your needle. Because there's nothing worse than hitting metal with your needle. And then you just do a little base stitch. Do a little base stitch. Do a little base stitch. Ooh, Darth Vader's head as a cutout would be cool. That would be cool. There's just so many ideas. So many ideas. Okay. So the next step is totally optional. You do not have to do the piping, but of course it's going to look even more amazing if you do add the piping. I'm going to mark a little half inch on each side. So there's just a little tiny pen mark and a half inch of each side. I'm going to grab my piping piece. This is pre-made piping um, just from Joann's. And I'm going to fold it at a 90 degree angle. So I just brought this little tail down like that. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. And I'm going to lay this piece right up against the edge at that 
one inch or that half inch mark. And then you can just use a clip in place. Yeah, it's super fun with it. And we, all you do is you just line it right up against the edge of your pattern. And um, if you want to use um, eighth inch or fourth inch basting tape to hold it in place, it definitely helps. Or even using, um, what is that glue? Um, Fabri-Tac or something like that. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, the first time I used piping was horrendous, and many times after that, it's still the same. And then I used the Fabri-Tac to hold it in place, and boy, did that, that really did the trick. I was like, oh, maybe I don't hate piping. So it's definitely all about how you attach it. Okay, so then you'll have a little left over that is totally okay. And you'll just want to fold it again at 90 degree angle. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. <sighs> yeah, yeah, this is definitely good for practicing. Um, you're going to fold it at a 90 degree angle and then add another clip. Boom, just like that. Thank you. And then you're going to sneeze if you need to. Yep. So, haha, then you're going to sew. I start at the top, and I, I go from the very top, I don't start at the piping, and I back stitch a little, and then slowly remove your clip. You want to sew right next to the piping. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, good. Yeah, Fabri-Tac. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You rock. Okay, so I'm so I'm using a walking foot. You can use a zipper foot or a piping foot. Um, I never found a zipper foot to be super helpful, especially on vinyl because it sticks so much. Um, so I had the best luck with a walking foot. But you gotta play around and see what works for you. I also can't remove the foot really for this machine, so I do what I can with what I have. And I'm just sewing with my walking foot on the piping and the inside of my foot right next to it. You don't wanna sew over the piping, you just wanna sew right next to it. And just go slow around the curves. Hopefully you guys can see this and my hand isn't super in the way. Get on the curve nice and slow. You can totally use pre-made or handmade piping. Make your own. Um, I know Dana made hers out of a matching vinyl or leather and it looked the bomb diggity. Looked awesome. But I'm lazy and I like pre-made piping, so whatever. <laughs> hey everybody. All right, so again, you've got your 90 degree angle right at that half inch mark. I'm gonna sew all the way through. Watch your finger. Might lift up a little, what else? Okay. So I'll, luckily I used black thread with white piping. And you can kind of see how close I am to the existing stitching on that piping. It's just a little bit off. And then the next step, you're going to stitch around the entire outside because you can see that this is lifting. And I've had it happen before where it lifted so much it, it showed from the outside. And I hated that. It made me sad. So we're going to use a basting stitch along the entire outside. This one doesn't have to be super pretty, it just has to be good. Alright. So there's our basting stitch. Done. You can trim all your extra threads. And you can trim your extra piping from that seam as well. So there's your main piece ready to go. We're going to attach the zipper now. 
I use a seven inch zipper. So you'll have the tape showing on either sides. I lay it face down and I kind of center it. The tape should um, span the entire width of your bag. Um, if you want to get fancy, you can um, turn your zipper tape a little bit like this so that you can't see it. Um, but I've never really had an issue with it showing, so I'm going to leave it go. I wanted it to be super beginner friendly. If you want to add zipper tabs to the piece, I say go for it. I'm all about changing up a pattern. Um, what I like to do is I like to baste my zipper in place first so I don't add the lining. Um, I just sew about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And this helps, helps you keep your zipper straight because sometimes it's hard to keep track of the three layers. Um, plus you can't really see your zipper. So I like to sew on my zipper first. And then I'll grab one of my lining pieces and lay it face down so all the right sides of it are touching. All the right sides. And then I flip it over so that I can see that existing stitch line. I'm going to come in about another eighth of an inch. I'm going to make sure my zipper is out of the way. If you want to unzip it, you can, but I just kind of pinch it and it stays where I want it to. So you're using about a fourth of an inch seam allowance now to sew in that zipper. Okay. And you can trim all your seam, your threads. And then I'm going to open it up all the way so that the wrong sides of the fabric are touching. And I'm going to iron it from the lining side because I didn't use vinyl in my lining and it's okay to touch that with my iron. Um, if you decide you want to iron it from the front, please use a pressing cloth or just a piece of scrap, whatever you have lying around so that you don't ruin what you just spent forever making. Right? I'm going to sew through the lining and the exterior. I'm going to switch to four and a half for a nice top stitch. If you need to move your zipper pull out of the way, do so. Our zipper on, we got the lining and the exterior piece, and we're going to repeat basting that zipper in place. Make sure these line up nicely. You want to make sure your right sides are together, your two exteriors facing each other. I'm going to sew it in place. And again, if you want to fold your zipper tape at a 90 degree angle, um, go for it. And then I'm going to add my lining piece so that my two linings are facing each other and clip from the wrong side so that I can see my existing stitch line. And I'm going to sew about a fourth of an inch. I'm going to unzip my zipper. If you have to lift up your foot, lift up your foot, keep your needle in so that you don't lose place. touch each other. So it should look like a big oblong oval like that. And you're going to want to press it from the lining again. And 
and top stitch. And don't roll over your cardigan a million times. Like I just did. Hi Jade, I just released a new sewing pattern and I'm showing how to sew it up. The link to purchase the pattern is in the caption for this video. to make sure I can see the heart and so I can see my um, piping stitches and I'm gonna line up these front panels at a clip and then line up those front panels again and add a clip and I'm just gonna lay it flat Bring my laying pieces together, add a clip. If you're using a glitter vinyl, um, your front pieces are going to kind of stick together anyway, so you won't really need clips. Um, but it never hurts to have them, just in case. So, there we go. Um, you're going to want to leave about a 4 inch opening in the bottom. Yep, four inches to birth it through. So if you want to mark it, feel free to use a pen and mark. You're going to want to start from the right side. This will just make your life easier. And it's a half inch seam allowance around the whole thing. Do you mean outside panels? Yes, probably. <laughs> yes. So my exterior fabrics are clipped together. And my, both my lining fabrics are clipped together, just like a regular zipper pouch. Thanks, Amelia. You know, words don't always come to me super well. <laughs> All right. Um, I use a smaller stitch length, about a three and a half. Back stitch. I'm using a half inch seam allowance around the whole thing. <clears throat> and if you are using piping, you're going to want to come in about an eighth of an inch from your existing stitch length. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. You want to make sure you don't hit your zipper ends. And the pattern should be made as such so that you don't. I guess I shouldn't say should, because I made the pattern, huh? <laughs> and you can kind of feel with your finger the cord that's in that piping. Okay, and then you just want to triple check that your D-ring is not in the way of your zipper. And it's, it's definitely not. Another thing that I do is I kind of insert my D-ring um, just before I sew it in. That way it can be flush with the edge, but that's something that's really hard to write in a pattern um, without getting people confused. <sighs> Good night, Emily. Um, so you keep sewing all the way up. Again, watch out for that zipper hardware, the metal zipper teeth. Come all the way around. And stop at that curve. And then you're going to trim here, I'll show you the stitching around that piping. Um, so this one here was my basting stitch, and this one, a little bit lower, is the stitching to keep that piping in place. Um, since I used such a chunky vinyl, I'm going to cut it down just a wee bit. 
Maybe it's a bad idea, who knows. find a pair of scissors. There we go. And you don't want to cut into the seam allowance that you haven't sewn. <laughs> yeah, it was awful, Nikki. That's why I'm not selling it, just using it up. <laughs> Plus I was using crappy scissors, so that didn't help. So now I'm going to turn it through the lining. Yeah, Sherry, I order, I placed an order. Um, so my supplier left out the gold vinyl from the order that I just made. Um, so those who pre-ordered gold vinyl, it'll be a little bit. Um, they're making me place a new order before they'll ship it out. Um, so I'm getting some of the really fun new vinyls. I'm excited. Alright, so. And then I'm going to iron over this opening, fold it in like that. I'm going to press it really quick. Oh, Stella, that's so weird. I don't know. Facebook Live is so weird and inconsistent nowadays, it's tough. <laughs> Um, so I have these cute little fold over tags with my brand name. Ooh, I know, right? I'm so excited. Um, but I'm just going to slide right in there. And then I'm going to top stitch this hole closed. Trim my extra threads. Stick it right back in there. And poke out my zipper, which should be pretty straight. Um, and there you go. Your pouch is all done. Um, so again, your D-ring might stick out a little far, um, and that's just to make sure that it's as beginner friendly as possible. If you are um, a more intermediate to expert seamstress, then you would know you could insert that just a little bit closer. I know, Sherry, right? They're so easy. They're a good scrap buster if you're doing like a custom order for somebody. And uh, you've got extra. It's so fast, it's so easy. From cut to sew, it took an hour. Like, come on. I know, right? I was like, mm, pink, really? Okay. But yeah, it is super fun. And this vinyl, uh, I would not sell it, but it is fantastic in a pouch. So there's the back. Again, if you didn't want to do anything on it, it's still just a really fun shape. Um, a really good way to um, get better at piping. <sighs> Anastasia's like, yes, I win the evening, yay! <laughs> I think I want it though. It gets mine. 
No, I made myself a Tina Beyonce or a Tina and Drake one. It was pretty cool. Um, so you could even add a few card slots inside of it. Um, for the large size, you could add a zippered pocket and make it into a small crossbody. You could enlarge the pattern by how many percentage? I don't even know. Um, but yeah, there are 40 million possibilities. Um, so when you guys finish one, post it to the wall. I'm super excited to add examples to the pattern page. And it's so cute. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, I am going to make a little zipper pouch that I've been meaning to make for like four nights now and work on some other website stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video on this pattern and I hope you guys make like five million and tag me in it. Good night.